Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video, we are going to be making custom tool tips. Let's get a closer look at this. Custom tool tips. So you put your mouse over and you get this thing right here, which you can customize to your heart's content with CSS only, no JavaScript involved in this project at all. Let's get started. Okay, so we'll start off, just take a quick look at our HTML file. It's pretty simple, you know, we have some boilerplate up here. Um, a link to a main.css file, which we're not going to be taking too hard a look at because it's just font and margin. Um, and then the tooltip.css file, which is where we're actually going to be working. Um, then we just have a couple paragraphs of text here that we can add tooltips to. You know, we can add a tooltip to this link, link, and maybe even add a tooltip to like a paragraph. So, um, how are we going to do this? Well, we are going to first off add data attributes to the elements that we want to add tooltips to, um, because then we can select them with the CSS. Remember, we're not using JavaScript in this project. Um, so we can select them with the CSS and also take the contents of whatever we put in the attribute and use them. Um, so I'll say data-tooltip. And since this is a custom attribute, you can really call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it tooltip because that makes sense. You could call it like tooltip text or ASDF or something like that. It, you know, call it whatever you want. Um, I'm just calling it tooltip because it's short and to the point. So data tooltip um, for this link. This link is pointless because it just goes to um, the hash sign, which, you know, doesn't go anywhere. Okay, and data tooltip for this link. This is another pointless link. And then for this paragraph, data tooltip. Tooltips are awesome. You bet they are. All right, there we go. That's all we need to do in the HTML and the rest we can do in CSS. So first we're going to select those elements that have that attribute by saying data tooltip in these square brackets. So that's going to select all of our um, elements that have the data tooltip attribute. And we can prove that by saying like background co color is red or something like that. And then switch over to Chrome, refresh. Yep, they're red, beautiful. Okay, go back to my editor, um, delete that because that's absolutely pointless. And so that's how we're going to be selecting that element, but we really are interested in the before element because, or pseudo element actually, because that way um, we can add the our own custom contents, which in this case is the data tooltip. So come over here and say content is ATTR. That'll select the contents of the attribute for us and pop them in the in the content uh, property here or rule style whatever um, of the data tooltip attribute. Okay, so save. Come over here, refresh, and it says. This link is pointless, this link. This is another pointless link, this link. And you bet they are that, okay, so it's working, um, but definitely not exactly what we want. So let's say position, absolute, so it kind of you know removes itself from the flow here. And then um, bottom is 100%, so they should be resting right on top of their parent element, except they're not, because we have to say data tooltip Oops. And make sure that this is set to position relative because that way this is being positioned absolutely relative to the parent element. So now they're sitting right on top. Um, of course, you know, it still is looking terrible. So let's keep going with our styles. I'm going to add a color of like it's kind of gray there, darkish gray, a background color. So we can't see what's going on behind, no distractions, of a just barely off white. Um, maybe we'll add a border of one pixel solid. And then that same gray color, we can add a border radius of two pixels. Let's see how we're doing. Looking good. Um, let's do something with the font here. Font family. I'll use Source Sans Pro, which is one of my favorite fonts and also sans serif just as a fallback 
font size about 80% of um, what it otherwise would inherit. Let's add some padding. Two pixels, five pixels sounds good. Maybe two pixels, four pixels sounds good. Okay, and a box shadow. Oh, 0 0.2m, uh, 0.2m, and 0.3m, and then our DBA, our color here is a slightly transparent black. There's our shadow, and now we just have two issues to resolve. The first is this text is all stacked like a column. You know, this is new line, another new line, pointless new line, link. Okay, um, we want it to be more or less one line, and we can do that by adding um, this um, white space no wrap. And that's going to stop wrapping, of course. And that works here in Chromium and also in Firefox. So that's great, it's cross-browser. <laughs> Always be cross-browser testing your projects, people, otherwise, you know, you're gonna be in a world of hurt because it'll only work in the browser that you developed it in. Okay, so now let's hide it. I'm gonna say opacity, opacity, zero. So it'll be completely transparent, but the element will still technically exist. So we have to say visibility hidden so, so that it's not, it's not even there, okay? And then we'll add a transition, all 0.2 seconds, linear, it'll just be a linear fade, so then we'll say data tooltip um, hover before, then we just say visibility visible, whoops, visible, and opacity is one, okay? It disappeared put my mouse over and it appears the tooltip appears that looks great um the only thing is tooltips usually appear after a delay which of course is something that we can implement with transition delay of about half a second sounds good to me and there you go it appears after about half a second those look beautiful up close too and it works in Firefox. All right, everybody, there you go. That is how you simply and quickly implement tooltips with pure CSS, no JavaScript at all. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.